If you're a woodworker looking for a moderately challenging and very rewarding little project, you've come to the right video. Handcrafted traditional style spring clothespins like this are your next project. They make great gifts and for some people, being an artisan clothespin maker is a great little business. I'm Herrick Kimball and I'm the guy who brought traditional spring clothespins like this back to America. In this video, I'm going to first briefly tell you the story of why and how I did that. Then I'm going to show you how I've made my classic American clothespins. This all started in the spring of 2012. I was relaxing on my back patio one summer day and my wife was a short distance away hanging laundry on the clothesline. My reverie was broken by what I would describe as an exclamation of exasperation from my wife. I asked her what was wrong, and she told me that the new clothespins she had bought were coming apart. They were junk. Then she told me that none of the new clothespins being sold were as good as the old clothespins she had that once belonged to her mother. Then she blurted out, you're the inventor, you need to invent a good quality clothespin. Well, that was a challenge. If you don't already know, I invented the Whizbang chicken plucker and the Whizbang garden cart and the Whizbang wheel hoe and a few other Whizbang products. And after doing some internet investigating, I found out that this style of clothespin was invented in America in 1887 and millions of them were made over the years by American manufacturers, but the last American clothespin manufacturer went out of business in 2002. Since then, all the clothespins sold in America are being made in Asia. And it wasn't just my wife that was noticing that all those clothespins were poorly made and totally unreliable. So I set out on a quest to bring high quality clothespins like these back to America. My plan was to first figure out the specifications and process for making these and to find an American spring manufacturer who could make top quality stainless steel clothespin springs. Then I wanted to make and sell classic American clothespins. But more than that, I wanted to inspire other entrepreneurial minded woodworkers across the country to also make and sell artisan clothespins. My plan was to provide specifications and springs to all aspiring clothespin makers, and that is exactly what I've done. Now, I'm going to show you how I make classic American clothespins. The pictures that follow were taken when I was making my first production run of clothespins back in the fall of 2013. I did my woodworking under a tent in my yard. The power tools I used were very basic and mostly old. The wood you see in this picture is premium kiln dried ash, and that is 200 square feet of material. I need to mention that I've slightly modified my approach and specifications from what you'll see in these photos, but they give you a general overview of the process. My PDF download that you see right here gives all the updated details. Let's begin with a side view right here of the classic American clothespin. I'll be showing you this picture with different cuts labeled as we proceed. But first, we need to cross cut our ash boards into three and a half inch lengths, like you see right here. Each of these cross cut pieces of wood is referred to as a flitch. After the flitches are cut to size, it's time to cut the grip grooves. One pass over the blade makes one grip groove. Three grip grooves on hundreds of flitches adds up to a lot of hours of cutting. By the time I got to my second production run, I figured out that I could gang two blades together on my old table saw, as shown here. And the feather board ensures that every flitch goes over the blade properly. By the way, that's a Jess M4015 feather board and a Bench Dog Tools 10 033 push block. I'm very pleased with both products and there are links to them in the description below. The objective is three grip grooves. The mouth chamfer is now cut on the flitches. Here you can see I'm using a 45 degree router bit to make the chamfer cut. The spring end groove is next. 
I'm cutting it here with a 1 8 inch core box bit, but this is one of the changes I made after these photos were taken. The spring end groove is much better if it's made with a 1 8 inch flat bottom saw blade. Close pin flitches are milled to precise dimensions. I prototyped my classic Americans using the ruler you see here. It's not an ideal tool for easily getting precise measurements. A digital caliper, like you see right here, makes the job of measuring for these flitches for the tool setup so much easier. This is the right tool for the job. I love my digital caliper. Next is the small tooth groove. This is milled on the router table and I now use a one quarter inch core box router bit for this. Next is the spring seat groove. I mill this on the router table using a 3 8 inch core box bit. The final groove is the large tooth groove, which is also made with a 3 8 inch core box bit. Here you can see three milled flitches. Note the fuzzy edges left by the core box router bits. That's not a problem because we're going to cut away all the fuzz in this next step. A slight bevel needs to be cut across the mouth end of each of the flitches using a table saw. To secure the flitches for cutting, they're clamped onto a flitch sled. Here are some pictures of the flitch sled without the flitches. I have specifications for this in my PDF download. Now here you can see that two flitches are clamped to the sled at a time and the mouth end bevel is being cut. Here you see the fuzziness is all gone and we've got a beautiful smooth surface. Next up is the handle end bevel. The flitches are clamped once again in the flitch sled and run through the saw. And once again, we have a beautiful smooth sawn surface. Now the pin halves are cut out of the flitches one at a time on the table saw. I have a piece of masonite clamped to my saw table. It works like a zero clearance insert. And here we have a beautifully crafted clothespin half. It's very satisfying to rip the halves out of the flitches and watch them accumulate at the end of the process here. A few clothespin halves can be sanded by hand, but it's a tedious task and not practical if you're making a lot of clothespins. It's better, much better, to tumble them together for a period of time. Tumbling them together will soften all the sharp edges very nicely. You can tumble a small number of pin halves in your clothes dryer. Put them in a box, wrap it with a towel, then plastic wrap, and tumble with no heat. That's what I did the first time. Three hours of tumbling in the dryer, and they were nicely softened. Then I added bits of towel soaked with boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits, and I tumbled some more. It works, but there's a better way. That right there is my custom-made clothespin tumbler. I fill it about half full of pin halves, tape a piece of cardboard over the opening, and tumble for a couple hours. In addition to smoothing the edges of the clothespin halves, the tumbling action also serves to reveal any weakness in the wood. There are homemade bucket tumblers on YouTube that would probably work for this application. I'll put a link in the description. To finish the pins after tumbling, I put a quantity of pin halves into a heavy plastic bag. I add linseed oil, some mineral spirits, and some Minwax tongue oil finish. Then I zip tie the bag and put it back into the tumbler. 20 minutes and they're all nicely coated. Then I dump them in a large box and I let them cure, occasionally stirring to keep them from sticking together. Let them cure a couple weeks to get really dry. Once cured, the halves are assembled with an O'Neill pinner, named after my friend Tom O'Neill who invented it for me. Specifications are in my PDF download and how to use it is in the private website I put together for people who purchase the PDF. On a skill level scale of one to 10, with a basic birdhouse being one, and a Chippendale block front secretary being 10, I'd say that making these clothespins rates about a five. If this project looks like something you'd like to do, check out all the links I provide in the description and get yourself a copy of my specifications PDF. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.